I'm only burning my half. All you care about is money. This town deserves a better class of criminal. And I'm gonna give it to them. Everything burns. Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk about a little known company called WeWork. A company that promised to change the way we work, play, and live, but turned out to be a massive fraud. They say the devil's in the details, so let's summon the devil. But first, if you appreciate my content and like seeing someone calling out corporate BS scandals when they screw over retail investors like you and I, consider supporting me on Patreon. Alright, enough shilling, let's get into it. For the last hundred years, humans have been working in office spaces and for the most part, it sucked. Long hours in cubicles, annoying coworkers, and single ply toilet paper. This is the fate we'd all accepted as par for the course. But what if it didn't have to be like this? What if we worked differently? Enter Adam Newman, 2010, a relatively unknown entrepreneur whose most notable project was a line of baby's clothing with built-in knee pads called Crawler. But Adam's a big boy now, and he has big boy ideas. If we can change the way babies work, why can't we change the way adults work too? He teamed up with Miguel McLevy, a classically trained architect, to completely redesign the modern workplace for the future. It's 2010, Soho, New York. WeWork has just been founded, and its basic business model is this. Rent out a lame conventional office space, redesign it, sublet the space to smaller companies, track and analyze data from the building to further optimize the workspace. It worked. It just works. With its open spaces, fresh design, and collaborative community, WeWork reached its target consumer, the millennial office drone. Drones. Drones. The first location was a smashing success. The company then grew quickly, receiving large investments from various institutions, but most notably SoftBank, the world's softest bank. SoftBank added WeWork to its Vision Fund, which was a venture capital fund for disruptive, innovative technology companies, which was run by Masayoshi Son, a publicly praised investor who most notably was an angel investor for the infamous Jack Ma and Alibaba, also commonly known as the Chinese Amazon. These investments brought WeWork's value to around $9 billion. Here lies the fundamental problem. Though WeWork sold itself as a tech innovation company, in reality, it's a landlord company buying long-term leases and selling them for short-term revenue obligation. Only $600 a month for a desk while taking 10 to 20 year leases. But that's nothing new. It didn't sell software or data, it simply used its own data to make its leasing business more efficient. Critics like Kevin O'Leary and others claimed that the business model was susceptible to market crashes due to its dependency on leasing agreements and could go bankrupt in hard times. I Easy told money. the WeWorks crew here in New York, I said, you are a zero and you're going to zero Ooh. with a bullet. Because that old game, that, that, the, the, that structure, that kind of company has been tried before twice, once in England, once here. It always goes to zero, because what you're basically doing is taking long-term debt obligations to either lease or buy a building, and then you're providing short-term leases to some really shitty companies that don't make any money. My point is, you have, you have a whole building full of crap companies that don't make money, and you have to keep paying your mortgage off. So eventually, when there's a downturn in the economy, you go to zero because you can't pay for the buildings. Nevertheless, with the money from their investors, WeWork was able to grow to over 800 locations worldwide, but still needed to grow faster to justify their astronomical valuation. So if you're a company that has massive piles of cash and needs to grow fast, what do you do? Spend, spend big time. First, you rebrand to the We Company, Check. Next, add We Branded Things to the We Empire. Nice. Add We Live, a subsidiary high end apartment managing company that fits the We brand. For example, they'd buy an old apartment complex near one of their workspaces, put in the modern style of their brand, and re rent the apartment units. The target market loved it. Check. Next, add We Grow, a communal based school whose own words describe it as conscientious entrepreneurial school which is run by Adam's wife Rebecca it was a new age posh daycare which by the way had its tuition fees between 22 and 42 grand nice what other companies can we add to our we portfolio how about we work labs powered by we made by we 
This time, the Wii company had ballooned to over $47 billion, making it the largest valued company on the private market. The Wii had won. By now, you may be wondering why all of these subsidiaries use the words Wii in their names. Interesting story. Turns out Newman personally trademarked the word Wii and sold it to his company for $5.9 million. No. Not only that, Adam owns some of the properties that his company WeWork bought. He set up the terms of the lease on both ends of the deal. It may sound like a conflict of interest, but that's only because it totally is. No man! How is Adam doing this and getting away with it? Because of the implication. There's an old saying, if you owe the bank $100, you have a problem. If you owe the bank $100 million, the bank has a problem. With the amount of institutional money backing Adam, he became somewhat untouchable for a time. This allowed Adam to do all sorts of questionable things. He was able to personally borrow hundreds of millions from WeWork at interest rates below 1%, which is well below market rates. He then turned around and bought a private jet for 60 million with that cheap WeWork loan. In the same year, the WeWork company lost $1.6 billion. Why did WeWork investors allow this to happen? Okay, it's an implication of danger. Adam was not only the figurehead of the organization, he also employed friends and family as top-level executives, further insulating him from corrective action by controlling the executive officers. Oh, you want to know more about Adam? He reportedly loved to drink in his team building events, with drinking starting early, too early. In one instance, after being forced to let 7% of his staff go, he served the remaining staff tequila and brought in the rapper from Run DMC to perform. He also liked the devil's lettuce, allegedly smoking before meetings and at work. Remember that jet he bought? Well, allegedly, he took it to Israel with his friends and family and a large amount of Mary Jane, a country where cannabis is very illegal, but he didn't tell his flight crew. Upon the discovery of the Sticky Icky and realizing they were unwitting drug mules, the crew immediately took off for the US, leaving Adam and company stranded. Furthermore, Adam's workplace demeanor was subject to outbursts, tirades, and lack of personal hygiene. Former staff members say he would order WeWork vendors to stop using meat at its HQ locations with no plan on how to do it. It appeared Adam had gone vegetarian and didn't see a problem with forcing his diet on his employees. From belittling employees for not completing impossible tasks to walking around the office barefoot, Adam was untouchable. How did he get away with this? Because of the implication. Over the years, Adam had sold hundreds of millions of dollars in stock to enrich himself and he still had an ace in the hole, but we'll get to that in a moment. None of this stopped the Wii company from setting its sights on September 2019 for its IPO, yeah, which quickly turned into an IPO, no. When WeWork filed with the SEC, it was forced to pull back the curtains for investors and what they saw, they did not like. They say you have to spend money to make money, and well, WeWork had the spending part down. In their SEC filing, it came out that they were spending $5,000 per new customer while showing no path to profitability. This raised some eyebrows. Primary investors pulled out or pulled back their investments. SoftBank, WeWork's largest investor and still the world's softest bank, reduced a $15 billion investment to a $2 billion investment, citing a recent decline in SoftBank's stock price as the reason. But we know what the real reason was. The damage was done and no institution wanted to be any part of the Wii company. The company that had once been valued at $47 billion now might go the way of Enron, WorldCom, and the Dodo. Bankrupt. Not to mention Adam Newman's antics. Does not mean you can do it on the job. How does a company like WeWork get that kind of money? You have to remember, over the past decade, interest rates have been very low. Combine this with an insatiable appetite for risk and corporate culture of growth at all costs, and you get the kind of environment where a charismatic leader can get investors to foot the bill until they can push the problem onto the market. But that didn't work this time. The IPO was put on an indefinite hold, institutional investors were crushed, and heads were going to roll. As of 2019, WeWork's estimated value had dropped to $5 billion, losing 90% of its original valuation. Remember those hard times the critics warned about? Wait till Adam sees a downturn. 
How do you respond to that? What value do you drive by actually going and telling the world what works and what doesn't work about another company that you have no access to their numbers? You probably don't understand their business model. In 2020, COVID was all the rage and people stopped going into workspaces. Why pay $600 a month to share a desk when I can stay at my home and work on the couch? Due to the federal relief programs, WeWork has been able to hold on through the pandemic, but in the first quarter of 2021, the company had reportedly lost more than $2 billion, according to Forbes. Adam, well, he was forced out of the company he'd founded. It probably had something to do with his reckless spending, alcohol and drug use, or a combination of the two. <laughs> he had to go, but not before he'd enriched himself to well over a billion dollars. So that's it, right? Newman flies off into the sunset and takes all he can carry with him? Not so fast. Remember that Ace Adams holding? It's called an exit package. That settlement amount is reported to be around $494 million, which was settled in 2021. Not only is WeWork bleeding money, but its former CEO is taking a very large cut of the leftovers. You may just think this story is a cautionary tale about a company that got too big and an arrogant founder that didn't care about how the company was run, but it's not. The value destruction of WeWork going from $47 billion to $5 billion is comparable to Enron and WorldCom. If you're not familiar with those companies, they are some of the most infamous value destruction stories of the recent past. The difference being, WeWork didn't make it to the public market, and the institutional investors stopped it from being forced onto the public. Anytime a company's valuation is divorced from its fundamentals, it leaves the opportunity for corporate BS scandals. And this sort of fraud isn't alone. Recently in June of 2021, GameStop announced its CEO George Sherman will be leaving after being with the company for only a little over a year. In that time, GME value has risen from less than a billion to over 17 billion. But this rise has little to do with the company's business and more to do with the Wall Street Bets Reddit phenomenon. But the companies parallel each other. Both started at a low valuation, but ballooned up due to massive investment. Even though over that same time period, GME has lost money hand over fist every single quarter. Sherman will be leaving the company with an exit package valued at approximately $260 million. The investors will ultimately foot the bill. My point being, look at WeWork and understand what can happen when you give a company too much money. Odds are they won't know how to spend it well, and at worst, they'll take it and put your money in the pockets of their CEOs. Give me money, money me, money now. Me a money needing a lot now. Jeff Skilling, Enron's former CEO, left the company with $17 million after lying to investors and destroying the company. Hundreds of lives were ruined. The devil's in the details, and if you don't pay attention, you will get burned. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you loved it, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can keep making more content like this. As always, huge thanks to my current Patreon members. They make this sort of content possible. And if you run into anything you think is a fraud, send it my way. My email is down below. All right, thanks for watching.